video editing on my Raspberry Pi 400 using FreeBSD. Right, this is my little emergency setup that I used uh, when everything was packed away, when I wanted to do a video or two. Uh, it's a Raspberry Pi 400, a little microphone there, and a little capture device that's going to a Windows computer, unfortunately, but that's uh, how it has to be for this occasion. And you've got a USB uh, extender block for all the various things, and FreeBSD is loading off a nice SSD. As you can see, it's logged into FreeBSD. Well, it's going to be logged in, in a minute. I'm just going to put my name in. And then we do start X. Now, this is weird because I'm recording this, but also doing a voiceover later. So if I get confused, you can understand. Recording myself, making the recording, using the software to edit that recording, it gets really confusing. Right, so here we are on the FreeBSD desktop on my Raspberry Pi 400. It's XFCE. It's very nice. Uh, we're just going to show you uh, that it is FreeBSD. Look, there's a NeoFetch. And there we go. FreeBSD runs really nicely and, and quick on the uh, Raspberry Pi. There is no hardware acceleration support yet. So some things are a little bit laggy, but it's, it's not too bad. It's very usable. So there we go. Just, uh, I've already got a folder set up with a blank SVG that I can do my Inkscape thumbnail for YouTube. Just load that up. Hopefully. There we go. A little bit slow, but you know, things are all right. Now I usually keep a font. Um, I usually keep a word with a font I use already there, so I can just change that word or I have to find the font again, because that can be quite time consuming. I'm using Roboto in this occasion. So I'm just going to pick a name for this video. Uh, video editing, maybe. Yeah, I, I, a lot of people do the thumbnails last, but I, what I tend to do is I, um, I do my thumbnails first, and then it, it, it can give me inspiration. It, it's, it's hard to explain. So I'm just going to hunt for a picture. This may be a temporary picture, or it may be one that I keep. I don't know yet. So my FreeBSD emergency setup. I'm just going to paste that picture in and make it bigger. And drag it down. Get it nice and neat. I can spend a long time in doing this. Probably too long. And I'm just going to bring these up a layer on top of the picture. There we go. And I might leave it like that. I might change things. We'll, we'll, we'll see how it goes. But it's not too bad. And I'm just going to save it, of course. Like I said, things are, are relatively snappy on the Raspberry Pi 400. It's um, it's a good system. I'm not overclocking it. I mean, I might put an overclock later, but this is at the stock speed. And it, it runs quite well. So that's been saved. I'll export it later. Not too bad. Right then. So I'm just... Uh, yeah, okay. If I can find it, oh, dear me. Uh, yeah, I'm going to try KDE, but on previous occasions it's it's too laggy, it's too slow uh, to really get any work done on the Raspberry Pi, which is a shame because um, Caden Live is something I know very very well. But we'll see how it goes. Right, yeah, the bright uh, theme is, uh, is is burning my eyes because I haven't got any other KDE installed. You know, like the theme. Uh, stuff so it's gone to the default setting it's a little bit laggy i can just tell um yeah i might not bother with that mm, yeah uh, we'll see we'll see we'll see how it goes so i have a folder with my svg and my thumbnail and i'm just gonna access the nfs because i've got on an external server yeah I'll, yeah, I'll need them ones I usually have a folder with quick start files and what that is is just everything like titles or animations or styles and wallpapers all in one package so I'm not hunting around or recreating from scratch every time and oh that's uh, it uh, disappeared but never mind that's hopefully yeah it's in there 
So open KDE again. Okay, Caden Live, not KDE. Unminimize it and drag the quick start file over. This is what I do every time. It's a little bit slow on here. Uh, no, it's everything slowed and stopped, so I don't think... Yeah, I don't think I'm going to carry on with that. I'm going to try a different one. Might try... Open Shot. Yeah, I'll try Open Shot. It's a very simple video editor. I haven't used it for a long, long time, actually. It's a bit like... Uh, that Microsoft one, I can't remember what it was called. There we are. And I'm going to try with the quick starts again. But I might do it individually. Yeah, rather than dragging the entire folder across, I'll just do one thing at a time as I need it. Maybe that's what I should have done on Caden Live. I don't know. So there's the title. If it, There you go. It's, there's a little bit of delay sometimes. You have to give the pie a little bit of little moment to catch up. So there's the titles. Not too bad. And I will do a little intro screen, a little title card, I suppose is what it is. Uh, if I can remember how to do it on here. There we go. Like we scroll down to, no, I don't want that one. Single one or double. Yeah, that will. Yeah, double. Raspberry Pi 400 video editor. Look for a font. Keep it as it is. Oh, yeah, I'm going to use that one. And that would be fine. I'm really not sure how you go about using animation on this yet, but uh, I'm just going to keep it nice and simple. So, there. The title screen and the title card. Very nice. Should I have it moving down? I might put a video on it. I don't know. I could put my ugly mug on it. So move it downwards. Uh, yeah. Oh, this is right. Yeah, I remember how you do animations on this. Very good. Yeah. So I might move it down a little bit more if I can remember. That's right. Just, there's a little bit of lag. There we go. So move it down and then we'll save it. Just to be sure, I don't want to say getting this done and then it disappearing. I'm not sure what we'll do, but it kind of looks good. Raspberry Pi for yeah, and they could have my ugly mug explaining at the beginning. We'll see. Right, so now is I just want to show you the config files and specifically rc.conf. This is what I use on my Raspberry Pi. 400. Uh, if you're used to FreeBSD, then you'll know what these are. And if you want to have a look at the boot, uh, dos.config. If I can spell it right. Oh, config. Uh, it's not .config, it's config.txt, and it's not there. Ooh. Oh, I know what I did. Good grief, yes. It's ms-dos, not just dos. There we go. Yeah, so this is pretty much stock. The only addition I did was uh, comment out the HDMI underscore safe. You could just put uh, safe equals zero, I suppose, but that, that stops the text from everything looking too big. Uh, lets you get normal resolution. The text is a bit small when you're booting up, but for the rest of the time, it's normal resolution. And like I say, I've not overclocked it yet, so uh, that's, that last bit I'll put some overclocking stuff in. So yeah, where was it? We uh, yeah, we just done the title card, and I think 
I will. Right, I'm just going to set the uh, audacity going. I'm probably pushing things too much on this. And this was one of my mistakes. Um, video editing, having a webcam going, and audio recording at the same time, push things too far. So I'm having doing this audio that you're listening to right now. I had to do this later. So it was kind of like as it was going on. It's all very complicated. And there I am. I was talking and it didn't really record properly. So I'm just talking to myself in my own silent world. As I normally do, as some people would say. So we're going to have a look at... And I should have really closed things down, but never mind. I'm not used to doing things on a more beefier computer. So I'm going to go back to... Uh, open shot and this time i've got some files which it's really complicated but what you've just been watching is what i had recorded and at the time of when you were watching it they weren't there because i hadn't recorded them yet uh, it's, uh, it's complicated and now i can put them on because i had previously recorded them, and now i'm recording a new lot to show you the the recordings that i've just done good grief Making a video about video editing, as you're video editing, as you're making a video, is the most complicated uh, process. So here I am, I'm just uh, editing the bit that you saw earlier. It's uh, very fluid, actually, really, really fluid, considering. There is one or two points in which, if, if I do too much, like this, that bit there, and if I do too much, it, it, it freezes, it sticks, there's a bit of lag. But if you're prepared to wait just a few seconds for it to catch up, it's very usable and a more simple video where i've just i mean i don't think i can use obs on this um because it likes the video drivers so if i had uh, audacity going and webcamoid i could do a video just with me just sat there talking so there's me just editing some video unfortunately uh, editing some audio unfortunately this audio uh i couldn't use do the same process, apply the same filters which I do on uh, normal videos, but I had to use a new one. So, here I am editing. And overall, it's not a bad experience. It's not going to beat you using a more beefier computer, of course. I have, uh, for my main system, my workstation, which I got out of storage again. But a Raspberry Pi can struggle, and I think my mistake was doing audio at the same time. Anyway, so I'm doing a new title card because <laughs> it must have crashed and I couldn't load it back up, so I'll do a new title card. It's basically the same. And the title card that you'll see now is the one you use on the video. I'll just drag that down. My usual process for making videos is perhaps not this uh, chaotic, but given the circumstances of how myself with only the, uh, a very low-powered machine for the last two videos, well, the last two videos, oh, for that uh, thank you video, you can understand. I just wanted to show you that it is possible to use a Raspberry Pi just about um, to make a video. Although explaining dot com, explaining computers dot com, they Chris Banner he did a wonderful um, video recently showing it, video editing in Linux using a Raspberry Pi five. I should imagine that the experience on a Pi five would be a lot better. And I can't wait to get older one of those. So we'll we'll see how it goes. So for this, I rendered uh, I rendered the video out, and it took a long time. I forgot to actually uh, measure it. I think it's like it took about about two hours, three hours maybe. It took a long time. And using that said video, I then put the video back in, uh, or played the video, and watched, and then did an audio recording on it. So. That's how I did the audio. So it was all still done on the Raspberry Pi. It's just uh, the audio wasn't done at the same time. And I hope you can uh, understand the reason why. So yeah, I just wanted to show you how I would put a video together using a, a FreeBSD on a Raspberry Pi 400. Not my usual um, way of doing it and not my usual video editor, but you get the kind of idea that things do work very well. It's not perfect. There are some glitches, of course. But, I mean, considering uh, the hardware involved, you know, it's, and there's no video acceleration, I think FreeBSD has come a long way in a short time since making a Raspberry Pi um, version of FreeBSD a Tier 1 project. It's excellent. Well done to the developers. And well done to uh, the Raspberry Pi Foundation for making the Raspberry Pi. Brilliant. 
Anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time. This and every other video on my channel has been made using FreeBSD and open source software.